He was born in Scotland, uh, in Elgin. After he finished school at the age of 12, he went into a, and worked in a solicitor's office. After working there for a while, he joined um, a shipbuilder's firm. He then left uh, that company and went to India to work. And then later joined a company which is now known as McKinnon McKenzie and Company, of which the first Earl of Inchcape was working at the same time. B.W. Macdonald became firm friends of the then James Mackay, who, who was the ultimate Earl of Inchcape. And he worked there for some five years or so until he became ill and they, um, uh, he really sent him back to Scotland. After a short time in um, Elgin, he got better and his employers asked him then to go to Australia, his employers being McKinnon Mackenzie. B.W. Macdonald arrived in Brisbane in 1884, just as one of the greatest economic booms for the Queensland economy was taking off. The boom was fuelled by a number of things, a lot of overseas investment, of course, but also by the gold discoveries at Charters Towers, the Hodgkinson Field, the Palmer River Field, the Croydon Field, and by the beginnings of real success in the sugar industry. When uh, Lord Inchcape came out to visit Australia, he made various changes to his shipping interests in Australia. B.W. Macdonald became a big part of those reforms and changes. And from then on, he, he virtually worked for those interests until the formation of Macdonald Hamilton. And um, he worked there for, in that capacity, as a partner in Macdonald Hamilton until he died in 1920. He would have reviewed the operations of the shipping agencies that he controlled. I think some might have got into bad habits, some might have been lazy in their efforts. He worked together with BW on getting these changes in place, eventually promoted Macdonald. The effects of Lord Inchcape's visit were felt for two generations, and as part of, of that vigorous shake-up, he brought B.W. Macdonald from Adelaide back to Brisbane, where he became general manager of the AUSN company and the British India Queensland Agency Company. Lord Inchcape uh, rose to be a very influential man in the shipping world. He was. Um, a major shareholder in British India Steam Navigation Company and the P&O Company. B.W. Macdonald's story of his beginnings in Queensland and his later development into a very, very significant figure in the whole of Australia illustrates a very important immigrant story but much more important than that, from both the Queensland and Australian point of view, is to have a local Brisbane firm, McDonald Hamilton, being the Australian headquarters of probably the major shipping lines in the 19th century of the world. And that didn't often happen. Brisbane was not often in the 19th and early 20th century the head office of such significant world businesses. Shipping was absolutely critical to the development of Queensland in the 19th century. Queensland did have great prospects in its very early days in the 1860s, but the prospects mainly came from industries in the hinterland of the coast the grazing industries, particularly wool, later on meat, the beginnings of the sugar industry, and then the magnificent gold discoveries. All those products had to get to their market somehow. One of 
what economic input did he make for Queensland? I think it still relates to shipping um, and the connection of all the ports in Queensland together. If you were uh, exporting cargo, you could send it down from Townsville to Brisbane. That cargo would be transshipped onto an overseas vessel. It gave that connection that was important. All the uh, frozen meat and wool that was came from out west, um, that had to get down to Brisbane. And it probably came on, on the coastal vessels of AUSN. So I think AUSN played a, a major part in the development of Queensland, the early development of Queensland. His obituary in the newspaper said, Benjamin MacDonald was a man of strong personality, of great tact and deeply sympathetic temperament. And he had a wide circle of friends who valued him for his fine character and high integrity in all his dealings. He was the most prominent figure in shipping circles on the Australian coast and was regarded as the king of the interstate shipping trade. Why was he called Napoleon of Shipping? B.W. Macdonald bestrode the Australian shipping scene like a colossus. I think he would be very proud if he was able to be alive and see the AOSN at its height, if he you know, could have seen the results of all his efforts um, come to fruition. I think he'd like to be remembered as a person that helped Queensland to start to get where it is today. With communication, with shipping, all this opened up areas that, I mean, Rockhampton opened up the west with all the wool and cattle, mining out of Townsville. All that was started because ships went into those ports and was able to do, take the cargo away and take it overseas. I think he'd like to feel that he, he played a reasonable part in, in that development of this great state.